What's this? Number Has 11. to be done today. Not on this desk. I've got enough already. Uh, well, give half to Joe then. What? Get up, no, 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 can do. Why? Well, I'm not here today. Computer course organised by the association delegate. Ring any bells? Yeah, but I didn't know all this stuff was going to land on us then. Yeah, I'll be back tonight. Don't worry about it. Uh, have fun. See you later. Peter? Oh, look, oh, I'd love to help, mate, but it's not my part. This one Goodbye. has A1 priority, quarterly crime statistics. They're not due till next week. Well, the inspector wants them today. He's got a meeting with a P Triple C tonight. Look, I joined the police force to fight crime, not be a secretary. <laughs> Isn't this your job anyway? Usually, yes, but I'm up to my neck with this station business plan. I don't suppose there's any overtime. Sorry, Joe, no. Typical. Well, look, if you get started now, you're going to have it all done by the end of the shift. <laughs> Barring uh, interruptions, oh, please. Speak to minute, please. Uh, statistics, Joe. What can we do for you, Mrs. No, Watkins? I'd rather Tom handle this, thank you. Judy? Tom, she's been at it again. It's got to be stopped. I only planted them on Tuesday, Tom. Yes, it's a sacrilege, especially after all the work you've done. It's for David, you know. Bit of a mess, eh? You know something about this? Only what I see with my own eyes. Do I know you, son? If he's got nothing to do with it, we both know who the culprit is. Oh, how do you know it was Hannah mucked up your flowers? Could have been a dog or anything. Was... Or, or one of those ducks down the pond. It was her, all right. Look at her, riding herself. I'd cut her bloody neck off if I get her. Judy, Judy, just hold that for me, please. OK, Hannah, come on. Come on. That's the girl. Paula, I believe this is yours. Hannah Mackenzie, what have you been up to? Making a nuisance of herself, I'm afraid. Oh, that antique shop. Well, they all put that mirror in the front window. Of course she's going to stop and preen no, herself. No, no, not the antique shop. Judy Watkins' memorial garden. Oh, well, that's part of the stomping ground, too. Yes, well, she's the one who's going to get stomped if she keeps digging up the garden beds. Oh, Hannah, you naughty girl. That Judy Watkins has been complaining again, has she? Well, she made a hell of a mess. I can't say I blame her. No one would. You're lucky that bird of yours hasn't taken a bait. Oh, you wish. No skin off my nose. No? Who's won the Champion of Champions prize at the Mount Thomas show every year for three years running? That's got nothing to do with it. Hannah has, because I give her her freedom, and that keeps her happy and contented in peak condition. Absolute rubbish. No wonder your poor little things never win any prizes. Oh, they've won plenty of prizes. Locked away in those little cages. My birds are very well cared for. Hardly room to move, and if any of the chicks don't measure up, I'm sure this is all terribly interesting, but it doesn't solve Judy Watkins' problem. Lock her up, Paula. I'll have a word in her ear. The vandal was a chook. Not just a chook. <laughs> Hannah McKenzie is a rather famous band and bullet. Remind me to take you down Ratho Lane sometime. I'll point her out. Maybe on a day when you don't have stats to compile, eh? All right. So this famous bantam, she's just allowed to roam the streets. During the day, Paula locks her up at night. Did you arrest her? I did take her into custody, as a matter of fact. She had done quite a lot of damage. Well, I hope you read her her rights. How are those stats going, Joe? Well, I'm uh, just wondering whether I should put Hannah McKenzie down as an apprehended Oh, very offender. funny, Parrish. It's not exactly top priority. It is to the people involved. A chook scratching up a few petunias. Judy Watkins built that memorial for her son who died in Vietnam. I'd class that as important, wouldn't you? More important than the inspector's paperwork? Oh, do I look like I came down in the last shower? If we had an unsworn member here to do some of these pen pushing, we'd have more time to get out just on the street. Just get on with the pen pushing, will you please? By the way, Sergeant, there was a young bloke hanging around the garden. Looks like he could use some help. Next time we're down there, If you want an unsworn room. member, don't just sit there getting your knickers in a knot. Get onto it. No, but you're not. Well, what am I supposed to do? You're the association delegate. I could bring it up with the inspector next no, time. No, you comes couldn't. In. Someone's got to do it, boss. I think it'd be a good idea to finish his paperwork before asking him for any favours. It's not a favour. It'll go down like a lead balloon, trust me. It's a legitimate workplace issue. All right, then I'll raise it with you. It'll be better coming from me. Boss, that was the Reverend Summerhays. One of his parishioners saw someone stealing from the charity bins out the front of the Holy Trinity Church. What? One Hawaiian shirt. Oi. 
Nice shirt. Yeah, it didn't cost me a cent either. Haven't seen you around here before. What's your name? Torf. I've been here four weeks now. Where'd you get the uh, shirt? Found it. I see. What's your real name? Dean. Peter Dean. You on the dole? No. It's too much paperwork. Know all about that. So what do you do for money? I don't need it. We're living in a surplus producing society. Food past the use by date, clothes that are slightly worn out. People call it a waste. I call it good stuff. So, uh, tell us about the shirt. It's beauty, isn't it? I found it in one of those bins. Why, well, is there a problem with that? Yeah, there's a problem. It's called theft. That's what they're there for, for the poor. I'm the poor, it's so... It's not quite as simple as that, Torv. You see, that shirt was donated to the Holy Trinity Church, not to you. It's just cutting out the middleman. OK, we'll explain your situation to the vicar. Just take it as a warning this time. And listen, if you need someone to provide you with some decent accommodation, I can arrange that. Why? I've got everything I need. You got permission to live here? You're going to kick me out. Not unless we receive a complaint. OK? Did you sort it out? No, uh, we spoke to the kid. We thought we might suggest he offer to do some uh, voluntary work to pay for it. That sounds fair. Yeah, except the Reverend Summerhays didn't want a bar of it, but said he'd already been in there preaching anarchy to the other volunteers. Yeah, OK, OK. Just get your head into those figures, will you? I understand you're compiling my report. Uh, yes, I haven't had a chance to look well, at it A few yet. things have come up, Inspector, but we're right on to it, I assure you. Good. Uh, what we really need, sir, is um, an unsworn member. That matter has been discussed with your senior sergeant constable. Oh. I thought you said this wasn't coming from the association. Well, there's a certain interest there, but that wasn't why I raised it. will not be dictated to. When can I have that report? I couldn't put a precise time on it, sir. My meeting is at 8 o'clock sharp, thank you. I thought we had an agreement. Are we getting an unsworn member? I said I would raise it with him, and I did. He said no. He said he understood the problem. He said no. He said he would look into it, but that it wasn't a priority. Well, maybe it's time we made it one. Parrish, let me explain a few facts to you. I want that Judy Watkins arrested. Mr. Stanford, can I help you? She's been kidnapped. We are not finished. <laughs> do anything about it, I'll do it myself. I wouldn't suggest that. Look, if you could just calm down. I tell you, she's been kidnapped. Yes, you talking about Hannah? Yes, she's gone. Was she locked up? These creatures are meant to roam. That's their nature. So she wasn't locked up? That Judy Watkins threatened her again. Hannah was just over the road at a neighbour's house. She often visits there. It had nothing to do with her. All right, all right. When did you first notice she was gone? About an hour later. Yes, but she wanders, Paula. Isn't that the point? Yes, but she was threatened. I know Judy can let her tongue run away with her, but I seriously doubt she'd do any actual harm. Uh, it wouldn't hurt to have a look around, perhaps talk to a few people. I don't think that's really necessary, Jo. Well, paper before paperwork, how many times have I heard that? I don't know what I'd do if anything happened to Hannah. All right. What about the inspector's report? Oh, this won't take long. Don't make a meal of it. Understood. Uh, ben? This is about. It's only a damn chalk. Yes, well, um, now she's missing. Good. Hope someone's wrung a bloody neck. You didn't do that yourself, did no, you? No, but only because I couldn't catch her. Paula says that you were across the road from her place yep, this afternoon. I went to visit my friend Peggy, and there she was. There she was, strutting around as if she owned the world. Right, you don't know what might have happened to Hannah. Wouldn't be surprised if Paula had set this whole thing up herself. And why would she do that? She likes being the centre of attention. Have you got any evidence of that? No, you only need to take one look at her. Right, thank you very much for your cooperation, Mrs Watkins. We really do appreciate it. You satisfied? Can we get back to doing some paperwork now? No, I think there might be a bit more plotting to be done on this one. These things can take time. No, I haven't seen her since this morning. You sure she didn't come back, do a bit more damage to the memorial? I would have stopped her. I don't want Judy hurting her. It's a nice barbecue. Thanks. Where'd you get it? I found it at the tip in Mary Bar. What sort of things do you cook on it? Oh, anything I can pick up. The old stray pet? That's not Hannah. I wouldn't eat her. We're not saying you would have killed her, but maybe if you saw her lying around. Yeah, I don't eat my friends. Okay. 
If she does turn up, be sure to let us know. So, no witnesses, two possible suspects, both with motive. We should return to the crime scene. Crime scene? Joe, it's a missing chook. Yeah, who is very important to its owner. You had the boss? You don't think he's going to know what you're up to? We would be derelict in our duty if we didn't door knock Ratho Lane. <sighs> All right. But at least radio the station and let him know what you're doing. He may well be evading tax, Mrs. Anna, but it's really not a matter for us. Yeah. Yes. Radio. Yeah, I agree, it's irresponsible, but I think you should contact the tax department. Yeah, no, it's not really a matter for us. I've got to go. Bye. Mount Thomas 900 receiving. Where are you, Joe? We need you back here ASAP. Sorry, Sarge. Uh, things are looking a little bit more complicated than we thought. If you've got nothing definite, I suggest you come back in now. There's still a few more things to follow up out here. Was that Constable Parrish? I Sir? thought she was compiling my figures. She is, but she's just been called out on a job. Uh, a missing bird. Sorry. It's <laughs> not bird. Missing woman or missing person. Tempting though it is to be one of the boys, Sergeant, we must avoid using that sort of sexist Matt language. Thomas, yes, well, I'll call her back in now. What, without finding the woman? I think even my report can take a back seat to that, don't you? Sir, so there's been a bit Carry of a Carry on, Sergeant. Mount Thomas 208. Mount Thomas 900, are you receiving? Your further inquiries have just been approved by the inspector, Joe, but don't take all day. Watch your feet. If this is about Hannah McKenzie, I haven't seen her since Tom Croydon brought her back this morning. Paula told me she was missing. I'm very sorry, but she had been warned. You uh, didn't see anyone around? No. Nope. You and Paula are pretty fierce rivals, aren't you? <laughs> She's not the same league. No? She had a fair bit of success with Hannah. Yes, well, she can thank her late husband for that. Greg was a very gifted breeder. So she beats you without even trying. That must be pretty galling. Are you suggesting I had something to do with this? Did you? What do you take me for? Calm down, sir. We're just trying to eliminate you from our inquiry. This is all Paula's fault. Fine bird like that. She ought to have taken better care. That guy's weird. Yes, he's also a chicken fancier. I can't see him harming her. Ah, the poultry squad returns. You found a chook nappy yet? Ah, uh, no, what can I tell you, Sarge? It's a curly one. Ah, but you've done a thorough search of the park, you've interviewed all the suspects, you've door knocked Ratho Lane. Yep, we've done all that. Yeah. Great, the inspector's stats are away. Well, I might just grab a coffee first. Here, have mine. I really prefer it. I found her. Cool. I found Hannah. See? Broken neck. So, where did you find her? Oh, in the bushes near Mrs. Watkins' memorial. Have you got a glass of water or something? Yes, buddy, sure thing. And uh, that's how you found her, wrapped in a towel? Yeah, that's what I saw first. You find all sorts of useful stuff in the bushes. You all right? Yeah. Uh, so you didn't notice anyone around? No. Yeah. Thanks. Th there's never anyone around lunch times. All right, well, um, thanks for bring that in. Hey, can I keep the towel? It's a really good one. It's got no holes. So whoever put it there knew they were pretty safe not to be seen. Yeah, it narrows it down to anyone who lives near the park or frequents it often. Yeah, and what's the significance of placing it at the memorial? Yeah, maybe they wanted to put the finger on Judy Watkins. Yeah, or something more sinister. Could be some weird cult to do with dead soldiers, or... We'll be two dead coppers if we don't get report to Falcon Price by the end of the day. Chill out, Benny boy. We're trying to bring a killer to justice here. Oh, PJ, I hate to break the news to you, mate, but we're not talking about a human murder case. The deceased is a chook. He knows that, but the principle's the same, isn't it? Pretty much. Yeah, so if it was a real murder, what would you do next? Get the family to identify the body. You ready?
Thank you. I'm really very sorry that this has happened, Paula. I know some people find it hard to understand how someone could feel so attached to a hen, uh, like a cat or a dog, maybe. But to me, she was a beautiful companion. She was always Greg's favorite. Greg was your husband? He passed away two years ago. As long as Hannah was around, it felt like a little part of Greg was still alive. John Turner told me your husband was a terrific breeder. Did he? Greg's family have always bred chickens. He taught me to appreciate a perfect comb, the length of the foot. Hannah was my final link to Greg. We'll uh, keep you informed of what's happening. Thank you. Can I take her home? It might be best if we hold on to her for a while. You won't cut her open? No, that shouldn't be necessary. Paula? What are you doing here? Uh, well, w when you didn't come back right away, I thought something must be wrong, so I just came to see if there's you've anything I could... You've got what you've always wanted, John. Hannah's dead. There's nothing standing in your way anymore. Ugh, I never wanted that. Why don't I give you a lift home? I'd rather walk, if you don't mind. Mr Turner, can I have a minute of your time? How did you know Hannah was dead? Please. You must have had some idea, otherwise why come rushing in here? You think I knew because I killed her? Did you? No, I didn't. So who told you? Paula? No, we don't uh, share things. I, uh, I, I, I just saw her go off and I, I put two and two together. Remarkable powers of deduction you've got, Mr Turner. <sighs> All right, I, I, w I worked it out because I, I saw Hannah in the park again. She'd pooped all over the stone and Judy was furious. Why didn't you tell us this earlier? <laughs> because I felt guilty. I should have done something, but uh, I was annoyed with Paula for letting Hannah wander. And, and I never thought for a moment that Judy would make good on her threats. All right, when was this? Not long after Hannah was found. I just walked off and left her to Judy's tender mercies. No, that's not right. What's not right? Hannah wasn't at the park or you didn't kill her? I certainly didn't kill her. But she was at the memorial again. It wouldn't surprise me at all, but I wouldn't know. I wasn't there. Where were you? Home, watching television. Anyone with you? My only son and my husband are both dead. I don't have very much company. You see, Judy, the problem we've got is that somebody actually saw you with Hannah in the garden just before she went missing. Who told you that? That's not important. What we need to know is if you wrung her neck or not. <laughs> I suppose we should be very grateful you've got time to look into this. No one took this much interest when my son died. I think Mrs Watkins has already answered the question, Constable. Thank you, Tom. I'm sorry your son died. I really am. But it doesn't give you the right to kill other people's pets. Didn't! Tom, I don't know who that witness was, but you've got to question them again because they're lying. What do you think, Miss? I think Judy Watkins is a respectable woman who deserves to be treated with dignity and compassion. Like she showed Hannah. If she says she wasn't in the park, she wasn't. Well, someone's lying. Hey, boss is right. If Judy killed Hannah, she wouldn't have wrapped her up all nice and snug. She would have just dumped her in a bin somewhere. Why would John Turner lie? Simple is covering for himself. No, I don't buy that. As you said before, Hannah was the one thing that was preventing him from winning first prize in the Mount Thomas show. He wanted her out of the way. Yeah, but he's a chook lover. Still one person's word against another, Joe. That Torv that hangs out in the park, maybe he saw something. No, if Torv saw Hannah killed, he would have said something when he brought her in. Yeah, but he might be able to verify that John was where he said he was. Can we go and have another chat to Torv, Sarge? Don't you think you've spent enough time on this today? Clear it up, it might look good on the inspector's stats. Really? Besides, whoever did this shouldn't be allowed to get away with it. OK. Thanks. You there, Torf?
talk. Talk, mate. Can you hear me? You all right? It's unconscious. Mount Thomas 208 to VKC. Mate, can you hear me? Stand by 208. Talk. Food poison. Hardly surprising given what he eats. Look, this is the kid that lives in the gardens. Yeah, he reckons he only eats food past its use by date. Gets from out the back of the supermarket, apparently. Whatever, it means that Hannah McKenzie's homicide gets put on hold until after he's feeling better. Yeah. Hannah McKenzie? Is this the missing woman? In a manner of speaking. Well, is she dead? Well, why wasn't this brought to my notice? I'll fill you in. Something like this should be reported to me immediately. Actually, I think there's been a bit of a misunderstanding. I don't want to hear any excuses about you being overloaded with paperwork. No, you see, Hannah McKenzie... Local woman. No, no, not exactly. Tourist. Well, yes, she was wandering around. Um... Psychiatric patient. No, she's a chook. A fowl? A prize-winning bantam hen. Not a person? No. I, uh... <clears throat> I wouldn't like this being spread about. Well, I can't imagine it going beyond these four walls. No. no, well, especially if you were sympathetic to the uh, idea of an unsworn member, for example. Are you blackmailing me? Uh, certainly not. I mean, I wouldn't like to see you as a laughing stock any more than you would. I'm not promising anything. I want that report. I can guarantee it. APM Parish. I'll do my best, sir. Not just your best, Parish. I think it's in all our best interests to get this report finished as soon as possible. Yes. Uh, did you talk to him about uh, getting more help? I think he now understands our problem. Boss, uh, Joe and I need it down at the hospital. Urgently. So what was the problem? Because we'd been in close contact with Tor before he collapsed, Dr Mel wanted to check us out. Well, why would that matter if it was food poisoning? That's been ruled out. He's going to be all right, isn't he? But they want us to contact his relatives. Do you have an address? No, he's only been here a few weeks. Have they got any idea what's wrong with him? Mel reckons his symptoms suggest he might have some sort of virus related to avian influenza. Apparently he can catch it from chooks. Blimey. Is it that serious? Well, he's got viral pneumonia. People can die from that. And this virus could be quite contagious. Well, what about you two? Have you been vaccinated? Well, that's a really fantastic bit. There isn't a vaccination. So, unless they find the cause and nip it in the bud, we could be looking at a major epidemic. Yeah, righto then. Well, we'll try and keep a lid on things until you get down here. See you then. Bye. Uh, Maury Fisher, field officer from the Department of Primary Industry, is going to be here before too long. He'll need someone to show him around. Look, a lot of people keep chooks around here. If this flu's as contagious as all that, we can't afford to wait. We're going to have to start asking around. Anyone else fallen ill? As far as we know. Do we know how this kid got the disease? Was it, was it by eating an infected chicken? Dr Mel said he would have had to have handled it. Memorial Park. It backs onto Ratho Lane, doesn't it? John Turn and Paula Stanford. Uh, someone would better get out there and check on them. Yeah, I'll do that. And uh, see if I've got any dead chickens as well. Right. It is possible he got this disease somewhere else. Do we know where he's been? He's a drifter. I mean, he had been up at Maryborough. He picked up a barbecue thing over from the tip there. All right, we'd better check out that shack that he's been staying in, see if we can find some ID. Ben, no use taking any more risks on that day. Thanks, Bert. Well, it wasn't the council who cleaned out Torf's place. You'd think if it was kids, they'd just take what they wanted, not take all of it. Yes, yeah, you'd think so. So someone's done it deliberately. Well, Paula Stanford and John Turner are both OK. Did you fill them in on the situation? Yes, and they said they'd go straight to the hospital if they got so much as a sniff. Did either of them seem on edge at all? No, oh, John seemed a bit jumpy, but he strikes me as the nervy type. Anyway. Were his chooks all right? Yeah, they are fine. Mm. So, the only dead bird around here is Hannah. Except she died of a broken neck. Now, are we sure? Because we know definitely that Torv had contact with Hannah when he brought her in here. 
So you're saying someone wrung her neck after she was already dead? Well, Paula could have done that in order to protect her other birds from the department. Paula wouldn't have done that. We don't have much to go on, Joe. It's worth following up. So what do we do? Do we take this carcass off to forensic? No, 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 no. Call t it would be much faster. Where is she, by the way? Hannah. Where did you put her? Um, sh she's in the fridge. <laughs> what? Oh, how was I supposed to know? She's in evidence bags and it's all wrapped up and I'll... I'll go and get it. No, no, leave her where she is. Let T-Bore handle it. So, are we dealing with avian influenza? Well, it's difficult to say. It's a notoriously difficult disease to diagnose. You usually know you're on the right track when you get a lot of dead birds. We're dealing with a potential epidemic here. We need to know. Well, I'll send off for further tests. Are there any more sick birds? Not that we know of. Well, that makes flu less likely. What are the other possibilities? Well, the bird's dehydrated. There's evidence of diarrhoea. So it wasn't the broken neck that killed it? Oh, that's about the one thing I can be sure of. <laughs> the bird was dead before anyone touched her. I'll dispose of that. We can't afford to take any risks. And the proper authorities need to be notified. Yes, they already have been, and we're talking to anybody with poultry. You're liable to create quite a panic. What's a risk I'm prepared to take? We've already got one kid in hospital fighting for his life. Then you should have a doctor look at the hen's owner, and anyone else who might have handled her. Yeah, we're on to that. That means you too, boss. I wouldn't be prepared to run any risks. Uh, right, uh, thanks. You handle the chook. Yes, I did, but I'm okay. But what do you mean you're okay? I'm okay. Anyway, there isn't a vaccine. Well, isn't there some sort of test they can run? That's the problem. You don't even know you've got it until the symptoms appear. So you get yourself checked well, out. What's the point if there's nothing they can do? Because they can find out if you're infectious. <sighs> Unless the virus is active, I doubt if I would be. What, what are you, a doctor? Oh, PJ. Oh, look, what about Paula? Well, I'm planning to talk to her and send her on to the hospital. No, a more sensible option would be to have a chat to her and then accompany her to the hospital. <sighs> You're not going to give me any peace on this, are you? No. Go all right, or right, Paula first. How could you suggest I'd harm Hannah? We're not suggesting anything like that. But we believe she might have been already dead when she had her neck broken. What? What? If you were aware that Hannah was sick, you might have wanted to protect your other birds. Oh, that's ridiculous. I know Hannah is the most precious, but they're all special to you, aren't they? Well, they've all got their funny little ways. I'd be very lonely without them. So who could blame you for making sure that nothing happened to them? Except there was nothing wrong with Hannah. She was perfectly healthy. Perhaps you didn't realise that Hannah had been sick. You might have thought that Judy had managed to poison her somehow. Yeah, well, I wouldn't put it past her. If Hannah was sick, you realise how serious this is. I mean, the whole district could be affected. But she wasn't. So wringing Hannah's neck and placing her near the memorial might be a good way of slating the responsibility home to Judy. You don't seem to understand. I loved her. If you lot leave these lunches any longer, you'll be having them for dinner. Oh, sorry, Chris, we've been flat out. Yeah, so I heard. What's the story with this boy in the chook disease? It started already. We don't know anything for certain at this stage. All we do know is we've got one very sick boy in hospital. Not sick anymore, boss. That Torv kid just died. He's dead? Look, everybody's really worried that it's like this mad cow disease or that horse disease where the trainer died in Queensland. Try and hose them down for us, will you? But if this boy has died, doesn't it mean it's already crossed over into humans? Chris, that is just speculation at this stage. Tom. If you say so. Can't even convince Chris. Well, I can't say I blame her. I'm not all that convinced myself. What have you come to accuse me of now, eh? Sorry I gave you a hard time, Paul. Oh, we know you didn't kill Hannah. I'm sure you didn't come just to apologise to me. No, no, I didn't come just for that. What did you come for? It's about the young guy. Oh, yeah. 
it's become very important we find his stuff. Stuff? Junk, you mean? Whatever. Have you had any idea what had happened? Yes, I do. Sorry? I said I know what happened to all that rubbish. Well, what? I returned it to where it belongs. Maybe it's another one. No, nah, this is deck chair. Somewhere amongst all this. Oh, here's a go. Talks about mum, signed Dale, postmark Benella. Uh, Mount Thomas 208 to 900. Mount Thomas 900 receiving. Got a possible contact for Torv Dean. Could be a brother. Dale of Vanilla. Mr. Turner? You there? Mr. Turner? Oh, yep. Nothing I could do. I sprayed. It didn't seem to help, they just kept dying. But you didn't report it? No. Why? To save your birds from being destroyed? I kept hoping against hope I could control the outbreak. You must have known that there was no chance of that. I couldn't face the fact that I was going to lose everything I worked so hard for. How's that boy? Well, I'm afraid to say that he's died. I'm sorry. I had no idea it was one of my birds that made him sick. How did Tov come to have one of your birds? Stole it, I guess. You didn't notice it missing? They'd started dropping by then. It's a bit difficult to keep count. So you took Hannah and that's how she got sick? I never meant her any harm. I was horrified when she got sick and died. That's why you wrung her neck and planted her near the memorial for Judy to get the blame? I never planned it. it I, I just thought you were moving in and I panicked. Do you have to tell Paula? I think she's going to find out. Yes, I suppose so. Why did you take Hannah in the first place? Jealousy. I got sick of Hannah McKenzie winning the champion of champions year after year. Mount Thomas 900 to Mount Thomas 208. Mount Thomas 208 receiving. I've got a Mr Fisher from the Department of Primary Industry here. Yes. I'm afraid so. So where is this place? Ratho Lane. It's on the outskirts of town. What, is it a professional setup? No, no, it's more of a hobby. Because all those birds will have to be destroyed. Yeah, but at least we're not ruining someone's living. No. Now what I'll do is I'll set up an LDCC. Okay, that's a local <laughs> disease control centre. Now can we do that here? Uh, yes, yes, help yourself. Paula, I'm going to need to talk to you. I'm sorry. I'll come over and explain. Yeah, uh, yours be next, love. But mine aren't sick. Ah, uh, sorry, they'll all have to go. He put Hannah in with his sick birds. Why? He says jealousy. Is he being charged? He could be. It depends whether or not you want to lay a complaint. Of course I do. I think he should be punished for what he's done. 
Well, you can come back to the station with us when we're finished, if you like. Could we go now? I don't want to see this. Yes, I'll take you, please. Yes, yes, I'll take you. Where's Murray Fisher? Uh, he's still out there cleaning up. Does he think we managed to contain the outbreak? Yes, he uh, asked me to pass on his thanks for our prompt action. Who'd have thought rivalry over a chicken could have led to this? Yeah, well, it's over now. I'm not so sure about that. Joe, it's over. You can still finish the inspector's stats if you hurry. Can I just check out one more thing first? He's been on the phone looking for them. It won't take long, then I'll come back and do them, sure. I promise. Take as long as you want, take the rest of the week. Mr. Fisher, um, mind if I ask you a couple of questions? No, as long as you don't mind if you keep eating while you do it, I've got to get back out there. Sure. Um, from what you've seen so far, can you tell who would have been infected first? Mr. Turner's, Chooks, or Hannah? Sorry, Hannah? Uh, the one whose body we showed you. No, no, can't help you there. So it'd be very difficult to tell that when they all seem to have gone down within an hour of each other. How would they have got it in the first place? No, no mystery there. It flew in. Watkins. They're up at the memorial next thing. Did you ever see Hannah down here? Of the things people don't realise the disease they spread. This is important. Did you ever see Hannah with the ducks? All the time, especially when people were feeding them. Paula, I want to talk to you about how this disease got started. Can't you leave her alone? I've already told you what happened. My birds got sick and they spread it to Hannah. Yes, but the problem is, Mr Turner, where did your birds get it from? I really couldn't say. No? It's usually carried by migratory wild birds. They're immune to it themselves, but they do pass it on to domestic fowl. You kept your birds cooped. How many other birds did they actually come into contact with? Hannah. You didn't take Hannah from Paula's, did you? She wandered in there, just like she wandered around everywhere else. We were always arguing about it. And John was right. Hannah ended up spreading a lethal disease. My birds were already dropping like flies when Hannah wanted in this morning. I worked out she must have been the carrier. I thought if I put her in isolation, she might recover. Why didn't you just tell me? Why? Because you don't listen. You never listen! It sounds more like the act of a friend than a rival to me. It's never been personal. Not as far as I'm concerned. Well, if you could just sign this here. Mm -hmm. And this means John won't be charged. Well, you're withdrawing the complaints. So I'd say it was highly unlikely. Shops will be shut if you don't come soon. Oh, coming. <laughs> We're just going to get a little something for Judy. It's nice of you. Well, we've both made life hard for her one way or another. It's the least we can do. It's not a date or anything. Uh, don't let this go to your head, Parrish, but uh, nice work today. Thanks, boss. You are absolutely right. Yeah, I usually am. Uh, what was I right about this time? It's the little things that count. Police work really is all about the people. That's what you think.
Back in the old days, there used to be a chook come in here, you know. Seriously, it laid an egg on the bar once. You were kidding. <laughs> you remember that, Chris? It was my pet, Wendy. That's right. And certain people used to tease me that they were going to eat her. Would have killed anyone who tried. Yes, well, we all know how carried away some people can be about chooks. Next time a case involving domestic fowl comes across the desk, I'm taking a leave. You're going to fly the coop, are you? <laughs> Don't think I'll put chicken back on the menu for a while, either. <laughs> Hi, hey Chris. Hot, please. G'day. What did I miss? Nothing. Not much. Dead quiet day, actually. Yeah. So, so how's the course? Totally incomprehensible. Where's Jay? Not bad. I'd like this in graph form. Has to be done today. Not on this desk. I've got enough already. Uh, well, give half to Joe then. What? Objection. No, 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 no can do. Why? Well, I'm not here today. Computer course organised by the association delegate. Ring any bells? Yeah, but I didn't know all this stuff was going to land on us then. Yeah, I'll be back tonight. Don't worry about it. Uh, have fun. See you later. Oh, look, oh, I'd love to help, mate, but it's not my department. This one has A1 priority, quarterly crime statistics. Mm -hmm. They're not juvenile next week. Well, the inspector wants them today. He's got a meeting with a PCCC tonight. Look, I joined the police force to fight crime, not be a secretary. <laughs> Isn't this your job anyway? Usually, yes, but I'm up to my neck with this station business plan. I don't suppose there's any overtime. Sorry, Joe, no. Typical. Well, look, if you get started now, you can have it all done by the end of the shift. <laughs> Barring uh, interruptions, oh, please. Can I you a minute, please? Uh, statistics, Joe. What can we do for you, Mrs. No, Watkins? I'd rather Tom handle this, thank you. Judy? Tom, she's been at it again. It's got to be stopped. I only planted them on Tuesday, Tom. Yes, it's a sacrilege, especially after all the work you've done. It's for David, you know. Bit of a mess, eh? You know something about this? Only what I see with my own eyes. Do I know you, son? Look, he's got nothing to do with it. We both know who the culprit is. Oh, how do you know it was Hannah mucked up your flowers? Could have been a dog or anything. Was... Or, or one of those ducks down the pond. It was her, all right. Look at her, riding herself. I cut a bloody neck off if I get her. Judy, Judy, just hold that for me, please. OK, Hannah, come on. Come on. That's the girl. is yours. Oh. <laughs> Hannah Mackenzie, what have you been up to? Making a nuisance of herself, I'm afraid. Oh, their antique shop. Well, they all put that mirror in the front window. Of course she's going to stop and preen no, herself. No, no, not the antique shop. Judy Watkins Memorial Garden. Oh, that's part of the stomping ground, too. Yes, well, she's the one who's going to get stomped if she keeps digging up the garden beds. Oh. Hannah, you naughty girl. That... Judy Watkins has been complaining again, has she? Well, she made a hell of a mess. I can't say I blame her. No one would. You're lucky that bird of yours hasn't taken a bait. Oh, you wish. No skin off my nose. No? Who's won the Champion of Champions prize at the Mount Thomas show every year for three years running? That's got nothing to do with it. Hannah has, because I give her her freedom, and that keeps her happy and contented in peak condition. Absolute rubbish. No wonder your poor little things never win any prizes. Oh, they've won plenty of prizes. Locked away in those little cages. My birds are very well cared for. Hardly room to move, and if any of the chicks don't measure up, I'm sure this is all terribly interesting, but it doesn't solve Judy Watkins' problem. Lock her up, Paula. I'll have a word in her ear. The vandal was a chook. Not just a chook. Hannah McKenzie is a rather famous bandom bullet. Remind me to take you down Ratho Lane sometime. I'll point her out. Maybe on a day when you don't have stats to compile, eh? All right. So this famous bantam, she's just allowed to roam the streets. During the day, Paula locks her up at night. Did you arrest her? I did take her into custody, as a matter of fact. She had done quite a lot of damage. Well, I hope you read her her rights. How are those stats going, Joe? 
Well, I'm uh, just wondering whether I should put Hannah McKenzie down as an apprehended Oh, very offender. funny, Parrish. It's not exactly top priority. It is to the people involved. It shook scratching up a few petunias. Judy Watkins built that memorial for her son who died in Vietnam. I'd class that as important, wouldn't you? More important than the inspector's paperwork?